guys welcome to the video so this is kind of part two of this color spotlight on Daisy's gray so we I'll, I'll link the other video below um, if you want to learn a little bit more about that color and kind of what led up to this video but um this video we are using uh, Davies gray as kind of an imprimatur so um, and I am also a little bit inspired by Kelly Ventura on Instagram. I love watching her painting um, time lapses. So I will also put her um, info below. And then you can see here that I used some of these pastels um, just to add in extra details. And I also used these Caran uh, pastel pencils, which I really love. And again, these will be in an upcoming haul. Um, and so I've heard that these are difficult to sharpen so if you have any tips on that please uh, let us know below as well um, and yeah so you can see that I like kind of um, at the end of the day if I just want to sit down and kind of just paint with um, just really no expectations or anything just have just a little bit of a play and enjoy uh, painting for a minute so these are kind of what I've been uh, doing at the end of not every day but some days um, as just a way to kind of wind down and yeah you can see on the right that's the Sennelier emerald green and then on the left is the Daniel Smith fuchsia um, and that is the one that I prefer. I have a very hard time getting the, you can see the, the one on the right, the emerald green. I, it's quite um, a staining color and I just have a really hard time getting it to the right color temperature. So um, there is a game of, um, I think, I don't know if it's the state of origin or something going on downstairs. So sorry about that. But um, yeah, so let's see so and I also really enjoy using wax paper if I've used pastels I use wax paper because the pastel really doesn't transfer onto the wax paper um, it just pushes into the paper more so if you use some other things um, the wax paper will or the paper will absorb some of the pastel which you don't want but I'm just kind of showing you here through some of my swatches and you can see that this kind of gray green color is quite evident I really enjoy this kind of muted um, these muted pinks and the muted gray greens and you can see like here even um, in my top 12 pencils I have um, also that kind of color going there so I've been really really enjoying um, this type of color this year I probably should have um, swatched that pencil actually next to it so that is what we're going to kind of work on and and do a little bit of here so you can see my desk there so um, I'm just uh, I didn't mention as well we're in the um, Holbein sketchbook and uh, I'm using a large brush because it's you know we're trying to cover quite a bit of area so this is, is it? I think it's in a Skoda Versatil and it's a cat's tongue I think it's probably like a 20 or um, I'll try and link it below but um, I am just getting the color and you can see that I am not being careful like I want the different brush strokes so I don't want a smooth wash I want texture so I'm trying to create even though I'm using a very smooth and sheer medium I want um, I want to create some sort of texture and um, kind of patina on the page so um, once that's done we, we leave that and let that dry so one of the things I have come to appreciate about watercolor actually is the fact that um, I can do a little bit and leave that and go and do you know whatever else I need to do and then I can come back either the next day or later on that day as well so once that's dry I've now gone into I'm not sure what I just used there but it could have been the pink color but um, 
you can use oh, I think I'm trying to use Potter's Pink here with the white to show you um, there's you know quite a few different uh, colors that pink colors that will work here you can use the through light you can use the actual pink color so one in, in the other palette is from Crema and then you can get it from KW Arts or I'm just using the Windsor & Newton Potter's Pink here with um, the white in the ceramic dish so I'll try and link that below um, and yeah I'm just uh, painting this rose like a peony over the top here and just uh, having a play seeing how that will work and I really really enjoyed the result so I did this painting as kind of a cool down after I um, did the last video and then I had been painting the um, the like study of Rembrandt's girl in a window and you know that's quite it was quite like when you're learning something new or doing something it's quite um, not just labor intensive but like you kind of hold your breath and you're trying to kind of just get that done you're not sure how it's going to turn out and this was just like a like relieved at the end and just I had really enjoyed it I learned a lot of things and now I can just kind of sit back and just um, have a relaxing paint and just um, enjoy it so what I am doing here so I did the pink rose and now I want to do like a side view and now I want to do a, a rose from the front view and I am using different colors here so I'm using the crema violet iron glimmer um, which is something like a um, kaput mortuum or like a venetian red or some type of violet earth so um, I really love all those violet earth type colors on the channel and I mentioned like quite a few different ones like hematite violet um, yeah and then you can see that I'm adding um, white and I'm also adding water as I go out you know further in the petals and I'm also adding the Daniel Smith French ochre and you can see that the petals are not all uniform so you don't want them to be the same size or the same shape you want to create um, a little bit of movement um, a bit of a different um, you know different shapes and um, if you look at a real rose it doesn't have exactly the same shapes so yeah you can see that I am getting that white out of oh, I think it's blocks maybe um, it's in a little ceramic dish and I really enjoy it because I use white quite a bit um, and using the white with the potter's pink just to put some little buds up in the corner and then um, and then we'll paint some leaves
So in classical painting, when you do an imprimatur or um, tinting the canvas as an under as kind of a first layer, um, you can use the grisaille colorway, the grey, the brunei colorway, which is like a brown, which I think chinabrese or French ochre, done some French ochre would be really good for, or a green grey, um, the Vodaccio or Vodai, and I think this is a really nice one. I feel like this um, is kind of like a it feels like an old tapestry or something really beautiful so yeah we do have a few videos coming up we have a pastel haul so last year and the year before I actually spent the year like collecting uh, like handmade watercolors or watercolors and creating a palette like a watercolor palette and this year I have been collecting pastels so I just show you a few here but I have like a quite a selection and so one of the videos will do that. One of the videos we will do is this um, handmade uh, watercolor palette swatches. And then one of them we'll do is this Old Masters uh, watercolor palette. So because I've been making the watercolors, I haven't really had the time to do these. They're quite, they're quite difficult, the swatching videos, because there's so many colors and, you know, getting the right um, shot for each color and things. So... Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll have a little bit more time now to do those. Also, if you have an order, hopefully um, most of you have received the ones from the last, from the order. But um, if you have um, any of the like last outstanding things, they'll be being shipped off on Monday or Tuesday, hopefully. I'm really sorry. Um, I did have a few extra things that I have added. And I always think that like the freebies and everything will just be quick, but it just never is as quick as I had hoped. So um, they will be shipping out soon. And I hope you guys have a really lovely week. I hope there was some inspiration here and go and paint. Bye.